Welcome to my ultimate guide to setting up a Git repository for a Unity project. In this video, I'll show you how to initialize a new repository, how to track large files using Git LFS, how to ignore files that shouldn't be tracked, and how to push your first commit to the cloud. My hope is that you can use this guide as a reference anytime you need to add version control to one of your Unity projects. If you're looking for a specific step, feel free to use the chapter markers to skip to any point in the process. Before we get started, if you want more content just like this, sign up for my Level 2 Game Dev newsletter. Level 2 is all about helping you develop the skills needed to take your game dev hobby or career to the next level. Once a month, we'll send you a curated list of content that'll help take you on the next step of your game dev journey. If you're interested, visit the link in the description to sign up now. All right, back to my ultimate guide to setting up a Git repository for a Unity project. Step one, initialize your repository. The first thing you need to do is initialize a repository for your project. Now, I usually do this early on, but you can start versioning at any stage of development. For example, if you spent a few days prototyping an idea and then decided you wanted to turn it into a real project, there's nothing wrong with initializing a repository at that point. To initialize your repository, you're gonna to need to download and install Git. If you haven't already, grab a copy of Git from git-scm.com. Just download the installer for your platform and go through the installation process. Once it's installed, open it up on your desktop. It should look just like this. Before we start, we're gonna use a command to navigate to our Unity project folder. Don't worry if you haven't used the command line a lot. We're only gonna use a few commands and I'll walk you through each one. The first one we're gonna use is CD, which stands for change directory. Let's type CD followed by the path to our Unity project folder and press enter. This is important because Git processes all commands from the context of the directory that it's currently looking at. If a command isn't working, the first thing you should do is check whether or not Git is currently looking at your Unity project folder. Now that we're in the right place, Let's run a git command to verify that our repo hasn't already been initialized. Every git command starts with the word git and is followed by an action and sometimes one or more options. The status command outputs the status of your repository. So go ahead and type in git space status and hit enter. You should get a message that says fatal, not a git repository. Good, now we know that a repository hasn't already been initialized. Let's initialize one now using the init command. Type in git space init and hit enter. This time you should get a message that says initialized empty git repository. We successfully initialized our git repository. Let's run git status again so we can get some information about the state of our new repo. We can see the name of the active branch and all of the files that aren't currently being tracked, which is the whole project at the moment. Before we track any files, we need to do two more things. Step two, configure Git LFS. Game projects generally have a lot of big files. You've got textures, 3D models, audio files, and a bunch of other assets that tend to consume a lot of space. The problem is that Git wasn't built to handle files larger than 100 megabytes. In fact, that is the size limit for any one file that you can push to a Git repository. Luckily, we have access to a tool called Git LFS, or Git Large File Storage. Git LFS replaces large files with text pointers, so we can store the file contents on a remote server. We need to configure our repository to use it, so let's do that now. If you haven't already, download Git LFS and install it on your computer. Once it's ready, restart Git and navigate back to your Unity project folder. Now, let's run the command Git LFS install, and we should get a message that says git LFS initialized. Perfect. Next, we want to tell git which files we want it to track in large file storage. The command for that is git LFS track, followed by either a path to a specific file or a file extension if we want to track files of a specific type. Let's go with that option, using Photoshop files as an example. Type in git LFS track followed by star.psd in quotes, and then hit enter. All right, let's run git status. And we can see that the command has generated a new untracked file called 
git attributes. The git attributes file tells git which files or file types to track using large file storage. So instead of running the git lfs track command for each file in our project, we can just overwrite our git attributes file with one that's already filled with the file types that are most commonly used in Unity development. I left a link to that git attributes file in the description of this video. Now, anytime you push a file with the type that's listed here, Git will automatically store it using large file storage, and you don't have to worry about managing your file sizes. All right, we're almost ready to start tracking files, but there's one more thing we have to do. Step three, ignore files that shouldn't be tracked. The command for telling Git to begin tracking a file is git space add, followed by the path to the file. Let's try it out using a readme file as an example. Type touch space readme.md and then press enter. Touch is a command for creating files. If we run git status, we can see that our readme file has been created and added to the list of untracked files. Let's tell git to start tracking it by running the command git space add space readme.md. Now, git status shows that the file is being tracked meaning that Git will be aware of any changes that we make to it. We need to track the rest of the files in our project, but adding each file manually like this would take way too long. Luckily, there's a way to add all of our project files at once. We just need to use the dash A option when we run git add, and all of our untracked files will be added to Git automatically. But don't do that just yet. The problem with this approach is that there are some files that Git shouldn't be tracking files that contain settings for your specific environment, and files that are generated by Unity, like logs and builds, could cause your project to break if you tried to access the repository on another computer. That's why Git has a mechanism for ignoring files that you don't want it to track. Let's try it out now by telling Git to ignore the Unity-generated logs folder. First, we need to create a .gitignore file. Enter the command touch space .gitignore and then open the new file in a text editor. I'll use vi. Each line in gitignore represents a path to a file or folder that git will not track. The logs folder lives in the root, so we can ignore it by entering forward slash logs forward slash. Now let's save the file, run git status, and we can see that the logs folder no longer appears in the untracked files list, meaning git is now ignoring it. As you can probably imagine, there are a bunch of files that we're gonna to wanna to add to gitignore. But we have the same problem as we had before. Adding them manually would take way too much time. Fortunately, again, the work has already been done for us. I've added a link in the description to a gitignore file that was created specifically for Unity projects. It contains entries for all of Unity's generated folders like logs, library, and temp, along with entries for files generated by various third-party tools like Visual Studio and Writer, and a few other files that just shouldn't be tracked. Let's overwrite our existing .gitignore file with this one here on GitHub. Now, when we run git status, we can see that git is only aware of a handful of files, which takes us to our final steps. Step four, track your project and make your initial commit. With git lfs and .gitignore properly configured, we can now begin tracking our project. Let's do that now by running the git add command with the dash a option. Now let's check git status. Perfect. Our project files are staged and ready to be committed. We can do that by running the command git space commit dash am and initial commit in quotes. This tells Git that we want to commit all staged files with the message initial commit. To verify that it worked, we can use a different command called log. Type git log and hit enter, and this should verify that our commit has been logged. Nice. Bonus step, rename master to main. This is a bonus step that, if possible, should be done before you push your repository to the cloud. For the longest time, the default branch in most Git repositories was named master. But this language is problematic. And as the tech industry continues to become more inclusive, 
many developers agree that it should be replaced whenever possible. Thankfully, it's very easy to change the name of our default branch to something that's more culturally sensitive. So let's do that now. We just need to run one command. Type git branch dash m master and then main and hit enter. There, much better. We've just renamed master to main and we're almost done. Step five, push your repository to the cloud. This final step is optional. Like most game developers, I go through a lot of prototypes. My hard drive is filled with Unity projects that will never see the light of day, but I still set up a repository for each one of them. Having a local Git repository can be invaluable. When your project is being version controlled, development is more flexible because you can create branches to test out ideas, and it's safer because you can use past commits to recover if your project breaks or if the code becomes too unwieldy. But there are some times when you'll want to push your repository to the cloud. For example, I like to work out of a coffee shop every now and again to get a change of scenery, and it's nice to be able to access the project that I'm currently working on from my laptop. The more obvious use case, though, is when you're working on a team. Even if it's only you and just one other game developer, source control is a great way to share a project and increase visibility on what's being done, along with a long list of other benefits. There are lots of places where you can host a Git repository on the web, but GitHub is the one that's probably the most widely used. So let's push our repository there. If you haven't already, go ahead and create a GitHub account. Then once you've logged in, click on the new repository button that's located on the home page. From here, you'll be able to fill in the repository's name, set its visibility, and tick off a few initialization options. When you're happy with the setup, click the create repository button. Your hosted repository is now ready to go, but we still need to connect it to the local one. To do that, we need to grab the repository link, which we can find at the top of the repository's landing page. We're gonna use it to update the remote origin of the local repository so it knows where to push your changes. So go ahead and copy it to your clipboard. Now, back in the git command line tool, make sure you're still located in the root of your Unity project folder and run the command git remote add origin followed by the link to your hosted repo. The only thing left to do now is push your code. Run the command git push dash u origin main. You should get back some information about the push and when you refresh your repository page on GitHub, you should see all of your project files securely hosted in the cloud. Congratulations, you successfully set up a Git repository for your Unity project. If you have any questions or would like to know more about working with Git and Unity, let me know by leaving a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Infallible Code. Also, don't forget to sign up for the Level 2 Game Dev Newsletter. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video. Special thanks to Bradley Hansen, Asier Casado Perez, Tunch Ongen, Anthony M. Davis, Michael Evans, Nanagon3, Trey Hayden, Nicholas Monter, Datuo, Sorov Chatterjee, Jennifer Irwin, Yeriser, Umut Shurin, Dustin, Pietrone, and Usuf Ali Kassel. Thank you for your support.